Hello, so I must mention first, I've done a video on this topic already, but today we're going to use the Levi Civita symbol to help us with our proofs. Now, if you don't know what the Levi Civita symbol is, or Levi Civita tensor, then I'll show you to go back to my previous video on this topic and look at that. But if you do know what it is, let's get started straight away. So our first equation we're going to prove is the curl of the gradient is zero. And zero is a vector because the curl produces a vector, okay? Now let's take the i component of this vector. So what we can do is we can say that the curl of the gradient, like so, we can get the i component of that vector. Now let's use the Levi Civita symbol so we can say i, j, and k are indices here. Now the partial derivative, okay, we can represent that with this, with our j, xj. This is our k, like so. All right, and we have phi is our scalar. Okay, so we have i, j, and k. Now, what this is equal to, I'm going to put, put out a half here because we're going to copy uh, one expression one more time. And I'll show you what that is. So we have i, j, k, like so. And then partial derivative of x, j, and k, like so. Okay, now... K and J are summed, but I is not summed because we have pulled out the I component only. Okay, so let's make use of K and J. So we're going to add, this time it's going to be I K J. Okay, I'll explain this in a minute. And then we have our partial derivatives with the uh, X K and J, like so. And then we pull out are phi. Okay. Now let's look at these uh, indices in more detail. So if you understand the Levi Civita symbol, then you would understand this as well. So let's say i k j, as we have here, that okay is equal to the negative of i j k. Okay, this is because we've swapped the two indices around. So uh, epsilon i k j, okay, that, that would equal negative 1 if epsilon i j k was 1. That makes sense, okay? So if this is 0, then this will be 0. But that's just 0, isn't it? So if this is non-zero, for instance, if this is 1, 2, 3, this would be 1, 3, 2. 1, 3, Two. Okay, for instance. So, using that, we then say this is equal to one half epsilon i j k. Okay. So we're going to, because we're going to use this expression here and pull that out, so we get i j k only. Okay, j. Okay, but then we have a minus because this is minus that. And we get this. Okay. Now you might be able to see something. We have mixed partial derivatives here, but we know that the order of these uh, derivatives doesn't matter. J, K, and K, J. Those orders don't matter. So we could write this similarly as half epsilon i, j, k, but instead have x, j, and then x, k, minus the partial derivative, second partial derivative of x, j, and then x, k. I can see that will go to zero. So we can say that all three components of the curl of the gradient 
is zero. So we have proved this, okay? And that's true for any i, so one, two, or three. Brilliant. So that's our first proof done. Let's go on to our second one, okay? So that's the divergence of our curl. All right, so we can write that as the divergence of a curl of a vector field, like so. And that gives you a scalar, okay? So, same principle. We're not going to pull out an I component this time, because it's obviously a scalar. So we, all we need to do is I, J, K, and when we have uh, I, Okay, I, and then we have J. Okay, and then of course we have our A, K. Okay, I, J, and K. So, uh, very similar to what we did before. Pull out a half. Okay, epsilon, I, J, and K. And then we have our partial derivative of R, uh, I and then XJ, okay, and then we add epsilon I, uh, that's what, yeah, JIK, that's right, yeah, JIK, and then we have our second order derivatives uh, I and uh, J and I like so. Okay? So again, as we established, i, j, k is simply negative epsilon j, i, k. Alright? Like we have here. Therefore, it should be pretty obvious that we can again bring out our epsilon i, j, k, so a half i, j, k and we have our derivatives i and j and then we have 8k as you can see that also goes to zero because the order of our differentials don't matter okay and that means the divergence of a curl is zero uh, and there you go. So that's a slightly different proof to what we did earlier. I know some people in the comments had troubles with indices and unit vectors. I've eradicated that completely by using the levi civita symbol. So I hope that satisfied uh, your wishes for this proof. And I'll see you in the next video.